sometimes we want or need the ability to just pass things around by reference, but still mutate them. And uh, that might seem like it's completely and totally impossible in, in Rust. Normally, we would say, yeah, absolutely. You, you can't like pass something by reference, by an immutable reference, and then mutate it. That's literally in the name of the word, immutable. But there is something called interior mutability, which actually allows us to do this. So um, there's a there's a couple data structures that that are given to us by Rust to sort of help out with this, um, and we sort of like use them together in conjunction to get what we need to get. So let's let's create a function here. Uh, so we're gonna do a function, and we're gonna like um, add one to whatever this thing that we're gonna pass in is. So add one. And so we're going to take in a reference to something. So uh, we're going to have our number coming in. Our, and I'm just going to call this like a wrapped number uh, because it's not going to give it a number directly. It's just going to be wrapped inside of these data structures given to us by Rust. So that way we can get it later. Okay, so this is going to be just a reference to, well, this is where it gets interesting because it can't just be um, a number like a U32 because, well, then we can't update it, can we? So it has to be wrapped in something called an, a ref cell. So we have a ref cell. Then we can put a U32 inside of here. Okay, great. Um, ref cells, however, are very often paired with something called a reference counter, an RC. So if I do that, RC. This is what our type is gonna look like. We're gonna have an RC, which does need to be imported. So each of these things are not part of the, um, the prelude. So therefore we need to have access to them. We, we need to pull them in with the use statement in order to get access to them. Okay, so we have an RC. Inside of that is going to be a ref cell. Ref cells are very similar to boxes in the way that now it's like taking something that we don't know what the size is necessarily, um, or maybe we do, and like put that on the stack, and it's really just like a reference to something on the heap. Um, if necessary, it could still be a reference to something in a stack. It gets interesting. But okay, so we have this RC, we have this ref cell, and then we have whatever the thing is inside of here. It could even be dynamically sized. Um, and let's say we're gonna, we don't even need to return anything because we want to mutate what this is. Well, let's uh, let's start by creating what this like thing looks like. So let's take our, our number and you're gonna be just this U32. So let's have you be a zero to begin with. And now I need to wrap it up. So we're gonna say, that our wrapped number is going to be an RC new. Inside of that, we're going to have a ref cell new. And inside of that, we can now put our number. Okay. Now we can call add one and pass this in. So let's um, let's do a debug at this point. So a debug to wrapped number. And then we can call add one and pass it in wrapped number. And then we can do another debug with wrapped number. And we'll, we'll see what happens to these. So moved value wrapped number. That's really interesting here. And we're moving it. So we give it ownership of it to the debug here. And then we're giving ownership to add one and then giving ownership back like you know, here again. So what if I just clone you? Uh, and then clone you. Actually, I have to clone all of you, except the last one. Last one can take ownership. Well, that's legal. So somehow this is legal. Well, it's legal because RCs can be cloned. Every time we clone it, 
the interior data is not changing. It's the same position in memory, um, and it's still pointing to that. But now we have multiple things pointing to it. Now, when debug ends, uh, whatever got cloned is dropped and goes away. So therefore, we don't need to like worry about it. It's it's just gone, and the reference count goes up. Hey, we have like we have two of these. Now we have one. Now we have two. Now we have one. Now we have two. Now we have one. Uh, but that makes this legal, and it's the same thing being passed around. Uh, but as far as the compiler is concerned, it looks different. Okay, so if I just do this and we just allow this uh, just underscore that so we don't have the warning anymore, and we run this test, we're going to see, okay, we have this rep cell of value zero, value zero. Um, okay, so nothing has really changed here. Now, we want to get access to the, uh, the well, the reference to this RC, um, and we want then, well, mutate it. I could even just say, hey, you know what? I just have a reference to this RC here. We don't have to clone it. We can just give a immutable reference. Everything's still working just fine. Now, how do we get access to it? I want to take this wrap number and I need to borrow it or borrow mute. So let's call this a borrowed number equals our wraps number and we're going to borrow. Now, something that's really important is that when you're using your, like if you're using VS code or anything else that's going to show you what method options are available, we see, well, multiple borrows here. We two borrows, but one is using standard borrow borrow and the other one is using well standard borrow borrow mute. Uh, do not uh, use the standard borrow version. If you do that, it's going to pull in the use a use statement uh, to grab borrow from standard borrow, uh, which then is just doesn't work anymore. These are methods that are directly on the RC that we need to use. So we're going to borrow and notice that we now have access to a ref with the U32 inside. So it's a reference. Now, this is just a reference to it. I can't mutate it. That's where that borrow mute comes in. If I borrow mute, it's now a ref mute. This is very similar to boxes in that the ref mute implements um, deref. So now I can just Basically, if it was something with like a dot inside of it, uh, like an object or a tuple, I can, you know, dot the field name and then just update it. But because this is a number, I do have to deref myself. So we're just going to do deref borrowed number uh, plus equals to one. Now you, I cannot borrow this as mutable. I have to mark this as mutable. However, I have a reference and the compiler is not yelling about, at me about mutating this. It's allowing me to do this, which is really, really cool. Um, let's go ahead and run this and see how it works. Well, we start with our ref cell value of zero and then we go to value of one. So even if I don't like, even if I clone this, and I remove you, so it's just a new version of the RC. If I run this, it still works as expected. And that's because as I'm cloning them, we're just getting new copies of the RC, but the RC is just reference counting uh, and giving the same exact interior stuff um, to whoever we're, you know, whatever needs it. Now, if I were to do multiple clones at the same time, I couldn't then borrow mute multiple times. That's because part of the reference counting is I can have as many immutable borrows as as I want, or one, um, if, wait, as many immutable borrows uh, as I want, and one mutable borrow at a time. Now, it can be dropped immediately afterwards. But if I try to borrow this uh, ahead up here, so like, let's say, like, you know, other borrowed number. 
equals our wrapped number dot just a normal borrow. Now notice that the compiler is perfectly happy with this because as far as it can tell, everything's gonna be great. And that lets us know that this is actually a, um, this is a, uh, a runtime thing. So if I run you, we now get this error. So it crashed because we attempted to borrow mute on something that was already borrowed. So something to keep in mind, we can borrow as many times as we want at a time, but we can only borrow mute if we haven't borrowed already. Now, ways to get around this, if you do need to borrow for some reason, well, it's a U32, I can essentially clone the contents of this. Uh, so let's do that really quickly. Let's just do like a cloned number equals, I'm gonna just create a block inside of here because uh, at the end of blocks, whatever has been created inside of there is dropped. We're gonna create this borrowed number. We're gonna borrow it. Uh, and then I need to like deref other borrowed number. And I do need a semicolon here because this is a full expression essentially. And that comes into the clone number. This then variable gets dropped and then removed from memory. The reference counter ticks down and then we should be able to borrow mute again. Let's run this and we're back to working again. So it is something where once we start using things like RCs and ref cells, it becomes imperative that we sort of know how many, like what is actually happening and uh, what memory is being accessed uh, for us. Like why is it being accessed? And then if we run into a problem where like, hey, we've already borrowed this, just knowing that at the end of a block, whatever variables are created in that block are dropped for us becomes really important because then we can just well add this block here and we're good to go. I can now use this clone number wherever I want. So anyways, that is how to get interior mutability um, with using RC and ref cell. There's some other types that allow other types of interior mutability. Uh, for example, there's a cell instead of a ref cell, but that doesn't actually give you a mutable reference to something that only gives you clones. Um, and there's also arcs as opposed to RCs. Um, arcs are actually uh, thread safe, so you can pass them between threads. But of course, if you do that, you can't use ref cells. Ref cells are not thread safe, but there's a mutex. Mutexes work with arcs really well. So there are a series of things that get more and more intensive when it comes to the runtime uh, if you need them. So anyways, we only are gonna need the arcs and, uh, sorry, the uh, RCs and the ref cells in the project for this, uh, this course. So, um, but if you do end up using threads in future projects, then take a look at arcs and uh, mutexes. They're pretty neat. Uh, with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.